Hey everybody, welcome to Miss Jeffrey's virtual classroom. So as you know, I love playing virtual reality and video games at home, so I thought I would bring that to our class. So welcome to VR pre-algebra. We are talking about volume of cones, and I wanted to review that with you today. So behind me are the equations for volume of finding a cone, and then we have a picture over here of the cone, and remember, height is the same, radius is the same. All right, the base of a cone is a circle. So in order to find that base of your cone, you need to do pi r squared. And then you have to multiply that by your height in order to get volume. And the difference between a cylinder and a cone is just to divide by three. So as we look at this equation here, there's a few different ways that you might see this done. So one third times pi r squared times height. That's how we want to look at it. But if you're following the steps that I gave you, the first step is to find radius. The second step is to square radius, right? And then the third step would be to multiply by height and by pi, which is 3.14. Your fourth step would be to divide by three. So how would that look? You could say V equals pi r squared times height divided by three. And another way that you might see this equation for volume of a cone online is volume equals pi r squared times height divided by three, right? So just h divided by three over here, okay? Um, so another cool thing about virtual reality here is if I don't feel like putting the marker back the way that I should, I could just throw it out and it'll find its home eventually. All right, so let's do a sample problem. All right, first let's get over here, get my eraser. So let's do a sample problem. Let's say our radius is two, and we'll just let that eraser go back. So our radius is two, height is three. All right, so plug in what you know. So going back to our red, one third, times pi, which we know is 3.14. Our radius right here from the center of your circle to the outside would be two. So we would write that two in place of r and don't forget to square it. And our height, let's say is three. I like to put parentheses around these, but just so that we remember, we're always multiplying. Multiply all of these numbers. But where do we begin? Again, step one was to find the radius, which is two. Step two is to square it. We have to start with that radius. What is two squared? Absolutely, it's four. What is four times three? Twelve, good. So we know that this is four and four times three is twelve. So now let's continue. 12 times 3.14, plug it in, and now divide that answer by three and tell me what you get. So our volume should equal 12.56, okay? 12.56. Fifty-six, And I'll zoom you in here so that we can talk about rounding. So when we are rounding to the nearest tenth, that is one digit past that decimal. So that makes our five either stay the same or round up. But we have to look at the six in order to determine that. So if I asked you to round this to the nearest tenth, what would you get? Our approximately sign. Absolutely, 12.6. All right, so that was volume of a cone. So now let's practice what would happen if we were finding radius. Sorry, I had to put my 
camera back there. So if we were just finding radius and we use the equation that we just talked about, okay? So let's say, forget what we know from before and we don't know radius, but we do know our height is three and our total volume is 12.56. And let's walk through the steps on how we would find radius. So 12.56 equals one third times pi times r squared because we don't know what it is and then times three. So if we knew that our height was three and we knew our total volume was 12.56, how would we solve for r? So we know we want to get it by itself. And we know all of these are being multiplied by each other. What's the opposite of multiplication? Good, absolutely, division. So let's make it easy on ourselves here, though. One third times three, what do you get? Yeah, it cancels out to one. So that disappears. One times anything is itself. So all we're left with is pi times r squared equals 12.56. All right, so how do we get that pi to the other side? Pi times r squared, the opposite of multiplication, as you said before, is division. So let's divide by pi and divide by pi. So if you plug that into your phone or your calculator, 12.56 divided by 3.14 should end up being four. And why I know that is because our radius from before was two, okay? So we know that we want our answer to end up being two. And so as we move down this line, you wanna get rid of pi and get r by itself. But now when we're finding radius, we have to remember, the opposite of squaring something. What do we do? Good. We take the square root. And so the square root of four is two. All right, guys. So we've done a couple sample problems here for you on volume of a cone. I hope that helped you. Over here, we said um, that the radius was two, the height was three. What did your volume end up being? And then for our second problem, we want to be able to solve for r when we already know volume. All right, let me show you around the place since you stuck around this long. All right, so I can move my camera. And this is a desert view that I chose for our classroom. Love the wallpaper over there, but pretty cool space. All right, so let me just leave the camera right here as I show you some different options. So your question today is, what is your favorite, what is your favorite backdrop, okay? So I'm going to show you some uh, different places here to go, and we're going to change our background to winter. Hey, it's snowing in Florida, everybody, so check it out, check it out. If you miss the snow, you definitely want to choose this as your favorite background. All right, you've already seen the desert, so let's go abstract. So we got some just random color lines, abstract. There's some people walking around in my classroom over here. So this is abstract, and let's show you calm. So let me know if you like the calm version. Looks like there is no floor, kind of crazy. All right, but just like a nice rainbow color everywhere. So that is calm. And then if you want to keep things nice and simple, I could actually just go with a black background. Crazy. All right. So that's it for me here today. Thank you guys so much for checking out my virtual classroom. Let me know what backdrop you like for our next video. If you like the desert, if you like winter, black, or calm. All right. See you next time.